Okay. So, yeah, again, I'm Barbara Guades. I'm a PhD student at ICFO, uh, the Institute of Photonic Science. Um, we are, my group of research and I are trying to do is to discover the ultra-fast world. The story began with this picture in 1964 from MIT when it was shown up, it caused a huge impact in technology to uh, look or to take images of fast dynamics of things. So what they did here is since, so until that moment, um, to take a picture of something that was moving, what you had to do is to reduce and reduce, reduce the exposure time of your camera. But now in this picture, what they did is they illuminate the dynamic with a flash of light that was sh short, really short, shorter than the dynamics of the apple. So um, with this flash of light, they could capture the dynamics like it was static. So the image was not blurred anymore. This flash of light had a, a duration in time that was in the microsecond scale. If, if you take a second, a microsecond is a hundred of a million part of a second, so it's something short in time. If we want to, uh, we want to measure now something that is even faster than that, let's call it ultra fast, what we will have to make is flashes of light that are even, even shorter, let's call it ultra short. This is what we do in our lab. Uh, yeah, sorry, here. Okay, this is my lab, this is my experiment, and uh, it looks a bit complicated, and the light that we can produce, th these flashes of light, are on the order of tens of attoseconds. So if one microsecond is a hundred of a million part of a second, one attosecond is a hundred of a million 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 of a second. It's something really, really, really short. So, um, like to try to make some scale in this context, if we imagine when the, um, from the Big Bang until now, um, a second is from this time scale, what an attosecond is from a second. So it's something really, really short. And this happened in, in this experiment here where this box in the, in the dark side of the slide, it's a, it's a high power laser that now it's closed and you cannot see it, and interacts with the other parts of the lab, uh, that these are vacuum chambers, and creates X-rays. These X-rays have the characteristics to be in these really, really short um, time scales. And then we put our samples and we detect um, the X-rays afterwards. Um, okay, so what now we, we generate this source and what can we look at? What is that fast that we could be interested in? We are not interested anymore. Okay, you are not interested anymore in the apple and the bullet because this is way, way too slow for us. We are going to look at things that are really, really fast and this it happens in atoms and we can look at the electron dynamics inside atoms. Um, if you look at an atom, it's something very small, it's an uh, Armstrong scale, and light takes one attosecond to go to run uh, from one side of a molecule to another side of a molecule. So imagine that what we are doing is to make a static, something that happens very, very fast in the, in the time. And why do we want to look at electron dynamics? Why this might be important for in the future? Because atoms are everywhere in the world and the way that they have uh, in, interact one between the other one is by connecting electrons. So if we look at this dynamics uh, of the electrons inside the atoms, what we will could explain is, for example, how um, chemical reactions initiate how, for example, if we illuminate a solid state, how semiconductors um, start the, the reaction, and this uh, will lead to uh, pro uh, possibly to the creation of more efficient uh, solar cells or even more efficient batteries. Um, to conclude my talk, I would like to have shown you how important and difficult is this, this fundamental research and how important will it be for our future society. Thank you very much for your attention.